I know you this here's child's father. The big gulp of juice I had just drunk came spewing from between my lips. Eve erupted in laughter from where she sat in her high chair eating her breakfast. Wow, I mumbled as I grabbed the roll of paper towels to clean up the mess that I had made. Um, I'm so sorry about that. Um, here, let me, let me get this cleaned up. I must have swallowed my juice wrong. With desperate eyes, I looked back toward the kitchen door for Monica. Mm -mm. Don't try to look for your little professional liar. This here just you and Nana talking now. The shrewd old woman said from where she calmly sat stirring her coffee across the table for me, as if she just didn't rock my world. Eve picked up her sippy cup and took a swig of her juice before spitting it out of her mouth like she had just saw me do. But instead of it projecting like she'd hoped, it ended up just dribbling down her chin. I chuckled because, you know, <laughs> that was kind of fun. Don't do that, sweetheart, I told her, putting way too much attention into cleaning her up. I ain't gonna lie, I was at a loss for how to respond. Nana had waited till Monica left the room and sucker punched me. Come on, Kayla. Come on, man, talk to me. You can do it, baby. Oh, man, damn, Monica. I was at a loss. I didn't know what to do. Eve began to whine because she was waiting for me to stop wiping her mouth so that she could spit her juice out again. I cleared my throat. Um, I don't, I don't think I know what you mean. Sure you do. You see, my grandchildren have always thought me to be too slow to keep up with their mischief. But I took you for a smarter man. Surely you know it's futile to try and pull the wool over my eyes. This here child look just like you. And if you and Monica think I don't know what's go been going on between the two of you in my own house, you're delusional. As delusional as you think I am. She held up her hand. Win the wet, cause I don't support no fornicate. My shoulder slumped. Oh, wow. I can't believe this lot had fallen on me. Monica believed that if Nana found out what happened between us, it would make her already failing health worse. Just this morning, she had a coughing fit that brought tears to Monica's eyes as she tried to convince her grandmother to go to the hospital for the hundredth time. If I said something and it made the situation worse, Monica was going to be pissed. Damn it. Um, Nana, my words faltered. Right then, Eve spit her juice out again. Relieved for the little reprieve, I went to wipe it. But the old woman stopped me. Young man, if you don't start talking this instant, I know something. I chuckled. <laughs> Nana thought she was so tough. Okay, all right. If I tell you, you have to promise not to tell Monica. My lips are sealed. She brought her fingers to her lips, pretending to zip them and throw away the key. I exhaled. Damn. You know, I had way too much on my plate to add this to it. My brother has been blowing my phone up all morning, which meant he had reached the breaking point and things then got real serious between him and the Cubans. Something I really needed to look into. But I wasn't, because I let men who called themselves my brothers talked me into training to be some kind of end of days warrior. <sighs> Please y'all, don't let my words cause any harm to Monica's beloved grandmother. Yes, I am E's father. She hit the table with her hand. I knew it. Mm -mm. I knew it when you first came through that door. You see, I may not have Madam Queen's eye but I can tell a man that come from money. Come up in here. Talking about you need a place to stay. Only one thing make a man live in squalor when he don't have to. Oh yeah? 
And what's that, I asked her. Monica. I barked with laughter. Oh, man. She hit it on the nail. She laughed with me for a little while before she erupted in another fit of coughing. I stood to try and get her some water or something, but she gestured for me to sit back down. Easing down, I watched her with weary eyes. Are you all right? Nodding, she struggled to clear her throat. I'm all right. I'm all right. Now she said when her fit had passed when is the wedding this she asked as clear as day i hesitated not sure how she would take the news that the wedding had already happened would she get angry that she wasn't there to see it i rubbed my hand over my head searching my brain on how best to tell her i didn't want to lie to her i see it in your eyes i know you love her and I understand that marriage is the last thing you young men want to talk about. But I ain't got long. And I need to know that when I'm gone, my babies are going to be taken care of. She reached out and took Eve's hand into hers. When you walked through that door, I knew y'all had answered my prayer. You got here just in time. I feel like I can rest easy if I know that Monica is your wife. I married Monica the day after I moved in. My words were quiet. For a moment, her mouth opened in surprise before a huge smile spread on her face. Oh, hallelujah, child, hallelujah. She clapped her hands together. That show is a blessing. Monica, looking good as hell in only the way she could, walked through the kitchen door interrupting her. What's a blessing, she asked. Her grandmother's sudden end verge drawing her attention. Hold it right there, young lady, Nana said instead of answering my question. What do you think you're doing with those tools? You see, I woke up this morning on the mission, y'all. I had put the repairs I needed to make around the boarding house off for as long as I could. The upstairs plumbing was the squeaky wheel and it was time for me to go and get in it. After I prepared breakfast for my little family, I snuck out the kitchen before Caleb noticed I wasn't eating. Because Nana had complained to him so often about me skipping breakfast, he had taken it upon himself to rectify it. But not this morning. I went upstairs to change into my brand new repair woman clothes. It's like Madam Queen always said, dress for the job. So you know what I had to do. Mm -hmm. I had to go shop. There was some serious work ahead of me, which meant I had to have the fly gear. I found Eve and I a matching pair of jean overalls that had these cute little flowers stitched on them. We even got the matching utility belts, which was perfect to hold all my tools and Eve's plastic set. After I was dressed, I bundled my locks up on top of my head and wrapped a hair wrap around them Erica Badu style. Then I grabbed my Plumbers for Dummies book and headed on downstairs. According to the book, the first thing I needed to do was turn off the water at the main valve, which they said was generally located in the basement or out on the street. I was on my way to check the basement first when I interrupted my Nana in Caleb's conversation that she so cleverly switched subjects when I inquired about it. Note to self. Ask Caleb about that later. Why, Grandmother? Whatever does one do with tools? I'm getting ready to tackle some of the repairs around here. Her eyes widened and a look of utter horror crossed her face. What? No! She looked across the table to my husband. Caleb? He grinned as he took in her distress, trying not to laugh. He cleared his throat. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Mon, see, I already got a guy coming out to take a look at that today, so... Don't even try it, I screeched, cutting him off, pointing at the two of them as I walked toward the table. You don't think I see what the two of you are up to? You dare to sit here and try to insult my intelligence? I narrowed my eyes at them. Caleb shook his head. I, I don't know what you're talking about. The knocking in the shower has been really bad for the last couple days. So I, so I asked Nana if she wouldn't mind if I called someone in, you know, to take a look. She said she didn't mind, that's all. This lying little weasel put his hand on his chest as he spoke as if he was sincere. You know, it's the least I can do 
for all the two of you have done for me. He had the nerve to blink innocently up at me after unloading all that crap. I put my hand on my hip. If he think for a minute he can outfox a master fox, he had another thing coming. Two could play at this. Oh no, uh-uh, that won't be necessary, Kay. You've done more than enough for us. You already pay more than your fair share of rent. And you were so kind to let me borrow that truck so that I can easily navigate around town. Not to mention covering the cost of food. Well, <laughs> it's the least I can do since you agreed to cook for me, he interrupted, still trying to hang with a pro. Nana nodded her head in agreement as she sat in her chair silently rooting Caleb on. I had something in store for the both of them because I will not be swayed. I smiled down at Caleb. Well, cooking for you is the least I can do, since how you convinced Nana here to let you cover all the utility bills. Now, I won't mention the fact that you didn't have to do too much convincing before somebody readily agreed. I cut my eyes at Nana. She sucked in her breath. Uh-uh, excuse me, little girl. What, what you trying to say? Ignore her question. I continue with my point. Hell. It's because of you, mister, that I don't have to flip burgers anymore. And as your landlord, it is my duty to provide the best living experience for you. You said those pipes are banging. Well, after this week, they won't be banging anymore. All I ask is that you don't get in my way and you allow me to do my job. Chuckling, Caleb threw up his hands. When Nana seen that, she shook her head at him. Don't give up, she whispered. And you, I snapped, pointing at her. She sat back staring at my finger as if she was going to be reaching for her switch soon. I ain't care. Her intimidation factor had dimmed in my older age. Eight years ago, I would have been frightened. Don't think I don't know what you doing, I told her. She huffed. I don't know what you talking about. You know as well as anybody that I've been looking forward to this project. I have read so much study material, I feel like a pro. She looked at my book over her glasses. Um, plumbing for dummies, she said dryly. Is that, the, is that the study material that got you feeling like a pro? Caleb chuckled. I flashed my eyes at him. He stopped laughing and holding up his hands. I, I ain't in it, he muttered. Well, zip it. No cheerleading from the sideline. He nodded. You got it. I held up my book. This book was written for dummies. So can you imagine what happens when somebody with my intellect reads it? Must I remind you that I was my class valedictorian? You know why, Nana? She ignored me as she brought her coffee to her lips. Mm -mm, don't worry, you, you ain't got to answer. I'll tell you anyway. It's because I was the smartest student of my graduating class. One does not gain that title unless they possess the capacity for abstract thought. I pointed to myself. That's what you're dealing with, brilliance. Now, if the both of you naysayers will excuse me, I have some pipes to repair. Then I proceeded to leave the kitchen with an exit that would have made Madam Queen proud. However, by Tuesday, I was in desperate trouble. See, I don't know how, but I ended up with a gaping hole in the shower wall and a leak that I could not stop. Well, I don't quite know if leak was the right word to use. It was more like a small gush. Now, I read in a book that a little plumber's putty will work for a small leak. So I went out and got some figuring a lot of putty will work for a big leak. It had to work. I had run all out of ideas on what to do. And after watching like a hundred YouTube videos, I was no closer to the answer. See, this is when good old grade A ingenuity came in use. And let me tell you something, y'all. I've always been grade A. See, I have found the miracle cure to plumbing in this putty. It was some wonderful stuff. Not only did it seal up the gush, it also helped hold together some more pipes I couldn't seem to get to stay connected before. Hell, I went out and got another pail of the stuff 
and used it to put the wall back together. When I was done, I stood looking back at my work. Not bad, mom. It wasn't the prettiest patching job in the world, but what it would do for now. When I'm done with all the piping in the house, I will come back and replace the siding on the tub. I had saw the exact one I wanted in Home Depot today. Looking at my watch, I grinned because I still had time to prepare dinner. Deck it, that girl is vicious. She a mama, she a wife, she a repair woman, and a talented cook. You can't mess with this. Yeah, let me tell you something. I was gonna love smearing my victory in Caleb and Nana's faces after this. Now, the instructions on the putty said to let it dry for a couple hours before using the shower. So, I took my clothes and used Nana's shower downstairs. It should be dry by the time Caleb came in for work, which will be perfect. For the last few days, he had to use the shower downstairs that nobody ever uses. Can't wait to be able to tell him he can come back to using the shower he was used to. And guess what, brother? No banging. Who did that? Monica did that. You got it. That's right. Tomorrow, I will get started on the downstairs plumbing. As I was making dinner, he came in looking extremely tired. Poor baby. Ever since he had started training at the lion's den, he came in every night looking like something a cat dragged out of the alley. He was convinced Lion and Gideon was trying to kill him. Last night, I had to rub his shoulders and back. He was in so much pain, he could barely lift his arms. And he had been so tired that he'd gone to sleep in the middle of the massage. How was work? I asked as he took a seat in the chair across from Nana, who said at the table helping Eve color her letters. He exhaled as he leaned back in the chair. Eve climbed down from her chair and jumped in his lap. She actually brought her knees down in his stomach, causing him to jerk up because she knocked the wind out of him. I should take you to the gym with me. You a little warrior in the making, he said to her as he caught her in his arms before but kissing her under her fat cheeks, causing her to giggle. I looked at Nana to see how she was taking Caleb's interaction with Eve. She didn't seem to notice. No doubt, she probably just thought it was natural for him to have developed this relationship since Caleb had been living here with us for a while. And I mean, come on now, who wouldn't fall in love with Eve after being around her? Come on. Work was fine, he told me when he had finished tickling Eve, who now laid her head against his big chest. It was the gym that nearly killed me. Them dudes, man, they ain't human. Nah, nah, chuckle. That is exactly what I thought when I first laid eyes on that lion. Goodness. Something in her tone caused me to look over at her. What you mean, goodness? Mm-mm-mm. Nana was in here being fast. Child, I ain't blind, was all she said. I slid my pan of fish in the oven. Cause see, I had waited long enough to get my gloating session on. It was time. Uh, now that I have the both of you here, I have an announcement to make. They both gave me their full attention. Three days ago, the two of you doubted I would be able to accomplish my goal of changing out a few old pipes, replacing them with new ones. Isn't that correct? Neither of them answered, but you know what? I didn't expect them to. Haters never did. No need to answer. I would just like to let the both of you know that the upstairs plumbing is complete. And I will be starting on the downstairs plumbing tomorrow. So Caleb, feel free to shower anytime you like. A grin spread across his face. <laughs> oh yeah, so I can, I can go shower real quick before dinner? I gestured toward the door. Be my guest. It'll be the best shower you've ever taken. He stood putting Eve back in her high chair. Well, all right. I'll take you up on that offer. I'll be back in 10. Um, excuse me. I said stopping him before he left out the door. He turned to look at me. What's up? Isn't there something you'd like to say to me? I looked at Nana. And you? They both looked at each other and chuckled. Come on, guys. Don't be sore losers. Don't, don't, don't be that way. It's not a good look. You two doubted I can do it. And, well, I did it. So I'm sure you could, you know, you could put the, both of your big brains together and come up with something to say to me right now. Nana mumbled something. I put my hand to my ear. What was that? I didn't hear it. You know, with you mumbling and all. I said, she yelled. Good job. I shouldn't have doubted you. Then she rolled her eyes. I huffed. Mm -mm. Well, I know the, the sting of embarrassment hurts a little. 
but I'm sure you could have done a little better than that. I held up my hand towards her. You know what? Mm -mm, don't worry about it. I'm sure your partner in crime can do better. I turned to look at Katie, who stood there studying me with a tired grin on his face. Good job on fixing the plumbing, Mom. I really do appreciate it. I nodded. No problem. But let this be a lesson. It's never wise to doubt me, son. This caused him to hold his head back and laugh as he walked on out the kitchen. I was just beginning to set the table when something strange happened. At first, I thought it was my imagination, until Nana stopped and looked up. You hear that too? I asked. She nodded. There was a high-pitched noise that at first started out real faint, but was growing louder by the second. Then a loud rumble that felt like it shook the floor. Then banging that was so loud, Eve started to cry. I turned to pick her up out of her high chair just as a loud pop filled the air, followed by Caleb yelling the F word. Then there was several more pops before water started shooting out of the sink, soaking us. <laughs> oh my goodness, I screamed, handed Eve to Nana. As I raced to the sink to try and turn off the water, it was shooting up so fast and hard that I couldn't even get my hands on it. Get a bowl, Nana yelled. And like a fool, I grabbed the bowl to try and stop it. You see, neither of us was thinking straight. Eve was yelling, water was spraying, soaking everything, and I was freaking out. Caleb shot past us in only a towel, running down to the basement. A few seconds later, the water stopped. I stood there in shock, dripping wet. Staring at Nana, who held Eve in her arms, rocking her. When Caleb came back upstairs, he just stood there in the doorframe, staring at me with only a towel wrapped around his waist. His ripped abs and muscles, chest on full display. My, 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 Nana muttered when her eyes landed on him. I put my hand over my mouth as I stared at him. He was steaming mad, and... I'm pretty sure it had something to do with the nice sized lump he now sported on the side of his forehead. Is everybody all right? He growled without taking his angry glare from me. Yes, we are right. Good thing you was here, my Nana purred. Nana, I scolded gladly, looking away from Caleb's heated gaze. What, child? I told you I'm not blind, she mumbled. Monica. Don't you have something to say to me, Caleb snapped. Reluctantly, my gaze went back to him. But it just ended up landing on that huge knot that had probably gotten there when that loud pop happened right before he yelled out the F word. Now, let me tell you something, y'all. If I was a better woman, yeah, I would admit that maybe, just maybe, I had misused the plumber's putty. And I might just, just, I might have bitten off just a little bit more than I can chew. It's also a slight probability that I had no idea what I was doing. But, because I was a sore loser and I had talked entirely too much stuff to turn back now, I decided to try and reverse some of the shade he was throwing my way. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I do have something to say to you, I muttered. He grunted, folding his massive arms, causing his chest muscles to do all kinds of sinful things that was probably making poor Nana I feel like she was menopausing again. Good. Speak up so that so that we can hear you clearly. He angrily returned my words to me from earlier. I cleared my throat <clears throat> before I put my hand on my hip. My Nana started shaking her head, knowing me so well. <clears throat> Why the hell you carry your big butt up there and mess up all my heart? Why the hell you carry your big butt up there and mess up all my hard work? <laughs> I didn't even finish my sentence before he charged at me. And honey, look, I ain't never been nobody's fool. You would have thought I was on track and feel how fast I made it through that living room and out that front door, baby. Okay, so plumbing, you know, plumbing didn't work out. The plumbing didn't work out. Hell. I can't be good at everything. Nah, let me stop tripping because see, I had managed to do some serious damage. And I feel so bad. 
Caleb got a crew in there and they worked around the clock to restore our water. After that, you know, he got another crew in and they began to make other repairs that the boarding house really needed. Because I had messed up, and I do mean real good, he had no troubles out of me, okay? He told me he didn't even want to hear my opinion. And well, hell, what could I say to that but okay? Now, Nana told me she overheard him talking to the plumbers and that they were telling him how outdated the pipes were. She said he had told them to run new pipes throughout the whole house. Now, I don't know how much that costs, but I know it's a lot. The boarding house was huge. Eight bedrooms, four bathrooms, two downstairs and two upstairs. There was a bathroom in the master bedroom that I never used because we had shut the plumbing down way back when I was a little girl. So now I just used it for storage. However, it was now being renovated with the rest of the house. This had to be costing him a fortune. He'd even taken Nana old car to his shop. I found this information out one day after I had come in from the center. Now that we were rehearsing for Madam's end of the year show, we met three times a week instead of once. Anyway, I come in and I plop down on a couch tired and the ever present sound of drilling and pounding of the contractors greeted me as I entered. Now I was sitting in her chair as happy as a kid in a candy store. What are you so happy about? I asked. Caleb is fixing up Bessie for me. Bessie is the name she'd given her Monte Carlo that she purchased new off the showroom floor in 1976. He said it's a good car and had a lot of potential. I told him that I didn't drive much anymore. So he told me he's going to take me for a ride when he fixed it. She clapped her hands together. Isn't that wonderful? I stared at her as if she'd lost her mind. I didn't even know who this woman was. My nana hated asking folks for stuff. And she really hated being a burden on people. Caleb was completely renovating the boarding house doing way more stuff than I would have approved of. But since I had promised both him and Nana I was I would stay out of it, I hadn't said anything about it. But this, this was just too much. How much are you gonna allow this man to do for you? She didn't even blink an eye before answering my question. All that he wants? Because I know he's really doing it for you and Eve. Okay, not what I was expecting her to say. What the world did she mean she knew he was doing it for me and Eve? Oh my goodness, did she know I had lied to her? I studied her trying not to show how rattled her statement had just made me. What does that mean? I asked because I was just too trying to try and guess. Sometimes I felt like my nan I played head games with me. It means when I go, I will be at peace knowing you and Eve have a solid roof over your head and not one that leaks. Her words angered me. Why do you say stuff like that? Stuff like what, Monica? When I go, I go in peace. She laughed. You do know that one day I'm going to die, right? I put my hand over my ears, trying to block out her words. I didn't even want to think about that. Nana and Eve was all I had left of my blood family. The thought of losing either one of them was incomprehensible. You're not going anywhere. And you should stop saying stuff like that because words have power. I need you here with me. I can't make it without you. It took everything within me not to yell those words at her. But she was breaking my heart and my emotions were unstable. You will be fine when it's my time to go. I've lived my life, child. You have to live yours. I jumped up off the couch cutting her off. Don't get comfortable with that idea. I won't be just fine if you die. I will go crazy because I ain't got no sense. So you see, I need you here with me because it's you that keep me sane. I turned and took the stairs up to my room two at a time. I don't know why, but my grandmother's words made me feel like weeping. I needed a distraction. It was time to call Contura and Shantae. Hey, Shalom guys. Just really quick, I have a few announcements to make. Um, I wanted to first thank each and every one of you for your continued support and patience with me in this form of ministering through love stories. 
I wanted to tell you guys about my two new YouTube channels. As some of you know, outside of writing, I also have a small farm that my family and I are getting off the ground. And my second love is planting seeds. I have been saying for a while now that I was going to start a gardening channel so I can bring you guys along with me on my journey to achieving an all organic self-sustaining garden. And well, I've done it. My channel is called Ribby's Garden. So shoot on over there and subscribe so that you can be with me through my successes and my failures. And trust me, there will be failures. <laughs> also, many of you may not know that I write under another name, author Edwina Fort. Under this name, I am working on my first book for sale called Redemption. To be released, Yao Willen, April 16th, 2018 so that's april 16th of this year family this is gabriel and yasmin's story y'all the redemption series is about some of our warriors that we've all grown to love and admired who married before they came in the truth so brace yourself some of these i keen were rough thus the name redemption if you go to my YouTube page, author Edwina Fort, and subscribe, there is a link to my website on that page. Click on that link and go to the free read tab of the author Edwina Fort website. Follow the steps and sign up to my mailing list. Then check your inboxes for a free sample of redemption. You are not going to want to miss this. I have already been told that this book is off the chains. To get a shortcut to both of those web um, YouTube pages I just told you about, if you go to the Hebrew Grio homepage, you will see on the side where it says My Peeps, and I have a direct link to both of those YouTube pages, as well as the Project Wake Up Jacob page, which is just packed full of information for the Hebrew mind, full of information. I also have a link to my sister Akoti Tamar's page, YouTube page, and she's vicious on their poetry, y'all. I call it food for the Hebrew soul. Food for the Hebrew soul. That's some, some good poetry. Go, go ahead and show some love and support those pages, y'all. You know, these people out here doing the work for the Hebrews, just putting in their work. Um, I would also like to thank Akoti Rebecca. This is a special thanks to my sister Rebecca. I don't know how many of you guys know, but she hosts the Hebrew Grill Listening Hour that happens every Sunday on Facebook in the Hebrew Grill Book Club at 6 p.m. Central Time. Guys, if y'all haven't signed up and for the Hebrew Grill uh, listening hour, you missing out. We get together and we have a good time. But I like to thank that Akoti because she put me in work for you know for this ministry. And also, I don't know if anybody looking for graphic designs, but she she's also um, did some graphic designing work for me. So go ahead and support that sister. She putting in you know she putting in them hours for this ministry. I also like to thank Akoti Tamar and my Ish who are also putting in mad work for this ministry y'all this just don't happen and trust me if we was depending on me to do it by myself we all be in trouble but this don't happen by itself they put in that work and i thank y'all for them because with their help we make this thing happen all right fam that's all i got um i pray y'all have a blessed day shalom